name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your kindness. We thank you for your love, Lord God. We thank you, O oh God, for this another chance, another opportunity, O oh God, to seek your face, Lord, and to hear from you. you we pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would speak a word to this house, Lord. Mm -hmm. Those that cannot make it, Lord God, we pray that you would speak a word to them in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. My God, we pray that you would heal those that are sick in their bodies, Lord God. Send forth your virtue right now. My God, we pray, Lord God, against the spirit of infirmity, Lord. Destroy that thing right now, we pray, in the name of Jesus. And oh God, we glorify you. Bind every evil work, Lord, by the blood of Jesus. And oh God, we glorify you even now, Lord. And we'll thank you, my God, both now and forever, Lord. We thank you for this week, Lord, this Thanksgiving week. My God, this year's been rocky, but Lord, you've still been good. My God, we've had some ups and some downs, but you've still been good. My God, we glorify you, Lord. Because what the enemy meant for our bad, you turned it around for us and meant it for our good. We thank you for it, God. My God, my God, you have proven yourself over and over to be faithful to us, God. My God, we thank you even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. We bless the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. Thank you, God, for this another holiday week. Thanksgiving week and amen. Usually this is the week we have off and so there will not be a Thursday night Bible class because that is Thanksgiving day and I believe this is the week of family. Thanksgiving week is family week and so we give off for family. Amen. And so uh, those that uh, listen to us on the air will be back the following week. No, I will not post anything on Friday since we're missing Thursday. <laughs> Amen. So we will be back here again next Sunday. Amen to God. And we pray that something today will be said to help your mind and your spirit. Amen. We're praying for those that are sick in their bodies. Amen. And uh, this virus is something else. And uh, it is going around the job and everywhere else. And so we're praying that God will uh, keep his people. Amen. And let the blood atone and cover for us in the name of Jesus. In the book of St. John, chapter number 11. St. John, chapter number 11. Now, uh, those that will not be tuning in for the next couple of weeks, I'm letting you know now, I'll be here for a while. Uh, in John 11, I'm going to be here for a while. So if you get mad today, uh, you'll be mad next week. Uh, if you don't get mad today, you might get mad next week. Uh, but I will be here a while. St. John chapter number 11. It is a very famous uh, illustration of the power that the Lord Jesus possessed uh, in the raising of Lazarus. And the name of this text for this series that I believe God has given me is Lazarus come forth. It's just a simple Lazarus come forth. Now there are some people that are dead. We wish that would stay dead and that we'd never see again and uh, uh, want to shout on their graves and everything else on their graves. But uh, uh, this is not the case here. Lazarus was somebody Jesus loved and he died and we're going to deal with some of the characters that showed up. Anytime there's a death, you got characters Amen. that show up. Yes. Now, some of them hadn't been there for their whole life, but mm -hmm. death happens. Characters show up. Yep. And some of them are entitled. Amen. And so we're going to deal with the victim. The crowd, the critics, and the Christ. So in this series, we're going to deal with the victim. We're going to deal with those folks that just showed up, the crowd. We're going to deal with the critics that are upset that victory was done. And we're going to deal with 
the cross. St. John chapter number 11 and starting at verse number 1, we're not even going to read the whole thing today. I'm going to try to read as far as I'm going to be able to get today. Amen. And then we'll move on from there. Notice here, it says in chapter number 11, verse 1, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus. Underline his name because his name has a meaning and it's going to bring this whole message together. Uh, named Lazarus of, of Bethlehem. Now, I want us to first understand word it's used is important. He didn't say he was in Bethany. He said he was of Bethany. Now, of means I'm not a participant. That is my former life. Oh, help me here, God. And so, when you look at what the word of is here, he's saying he was not a participant in Bethlehem. He was a participant of where his, his station was at that point. And we're going to get to that as well. The town of Mary and his sister Martha. It was Mary which anointed uh, the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Here's kinfolks together. Amen. How appropriate for this time uh, of the year, uh, family-oriented time. It's supposed to be. I know we done made everything from now to uh, January 1st commercial, but it's supposed to be family-oriented. And so look at what is happening here. You got two sisters whose brother is sick. Now, in a close-knit family, when one is sick, the others come to the rescue. But we do understand that some people, you're glad they're sick. Because that means you don't now have to be bothered with them. But here there was a family that was close knit and he was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, sent unto Jesus saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest continually is sick. And verse number four, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might uh, be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When uh, he had heard that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Now, with these few parts of this scripture, hallelujah, Jesus loves the last. His name means one whom God aids. Now we got, we got to remember this. Lazarus' name means one whom God aids. But just because God loves you don't mean there's not going to be some trauma and drama in your life. Oh, help me hear God. Just because he loves you and he aids you don't mean there's going to be some upsetting of the apple cart sometime. Oh, hallelujah. And so the Bible says here that first of all, you got the victim. Lazarus was a faithful disciple. Lazarus was close to Jesus. Can I say this? Just because you walk close don't mean things are not going to happen to you. But the things that happen to you then 
backwards. I didn't catch that. The things that happen to you when you're close to Jesus has nothing to do with you. It has to do for the glorification of him who loves you. Good God Almighty. Now get this if you please. The Bible declares that here Lazarus whom Jesus loved. Now we know that love, Lord have mercy, is more than a word. It's an action. Here the Bible lays out that the Lord loves him but it's a delayed action. Oh my God. A delayed action does not mean God doesn't love you. A delayed action means God is proving something. We declare all things work together for the good to them that love God. That sounds good until we have to live that part. It sounds good until you got to have the all things working together that you don't like for your good. Oh, help me here, God. You know, some of us shout over the scriptures until we got to live the scripture. Lord, have mercy. We used to shout about it. When you, we used to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. That sounded good until you had to live all times. And found out, guess what, for every sunny day, there's some cloudy days. And for every cloudy days, there's some rainy days. And for every rainy day, there's some snow days. And there's some sleep days. And there's some ice storms in your life. But all things work. Yes, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I looked even at this pandemic. It's working for our good. See, the problem is... Most of us prayed that it didn't get cold. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't catch that. We prayed no snow. But you don't understand God designs things to happen. So other things stay in balance. Right. Ooh, good God. Uh -huh. It takes a, a certain amount of cold days and below freezing days to kill certain virus. Yes. Come on now. Teach oh, hallelujah. Come on, Without that being in check, viruses shoot up. Yes. Instead of us praying against God's system, we should say, Lord, help us to live in your system yes. and for your system. Yes. 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 Oh, help me here, God. Instead of us being upset and trying to pray against the will of God, we should understand why God allows certain things. And sometimes it allows it, he allows it just for his glory and for us to understand it is all working together. Now get this, the victim did not know the plan that was behind the story. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. He didn't understand why he got sick. You know we rationalize everything. I'm paying my tithes. Why am I broke? I'm, I'm going to church. Why is this still fighting against me? I, I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been doing everything I was supposed to be doing. Why is God fighting against me? I like people sometimes. I, I go along with things sometimes. But why is God allowing this? Well, let me tell you something. There's something greater than you have. Oh my God, for we understand that we must be a part of a greater cloud of witnesses. And what is one of the witnesses said? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. How to get your enemies to surround you is to make them think you're about to fail. Your enemies avoid you when everything going good. But when the soon as they think you're about to crumble, they come in and throw. Yes. Yes, so guess what? God had to come in and throw so he can prepare the table before you in the presence. 
repentance of your enemies. Woo. Hallelujah. I'm not going to finish this today. Lord have mercy. Get this if you please. Too many of us are wondering and questioning God about the front story. We're wondering why we went through what we went through. And we're questioning God about the middle story. Why we feel like I'm stuck and can't leave. And we're still wondering about the future story. God, what are you going to do about this after a while? But we fail to realize God declared the end from the beginning. He had the end already figured out before you even started from the front story. He never told you how he was going to get you to where he promised you. He never told you that the road would be easy. He just said, I'm going to get you to where you need to go. Right. Woo. In other words, he never told you how many times you had to fill up in gas to get to on your trip. He just told you, I'm going to get you from A to B. Too often, we're trying to figure up cause in the natural, but we haven't figured up the cost in the spiritual. It costs you to be loved by God. It costs you. Can, can I tell you something? The devil is always throwing accusations out there. So God has to allow some things to happen. So when the devil throws the accusations, he can say, look, they went through it. Look. They've been tried. Look, you tried to rattle them, but I stabilized it. James tells me this, that the trying of my faith worketh patience. Now get this if you please. The trying of my faith, the, the trials of my faith are working for me, although I don't see it. You don't see patience coming upon you. You see patience after it's developed. Ooh. Ooh. Anybody catch that? You don't see it showing up. You see it after it's developed. In other words, you see the fruit. In other words, you're looking at a tree not knowing what it is until springtime and the fruit shows up and all of a sudden you say, oh, I can identify what that is. There's some places in God you can't identify that God has matured you until you go through the storm. He knew Jesus loved him. But where are you? <laughs> Woo! When you know Jesus loves you. But you say, where are you? You know when somebody promises they're going to pick you up at a certain time and it's getting close to that time. You still on your way? <laughs> yeah, I'll be there. When it show up to that time, uh, uh, where you at? I'm just down the road a little bit. And they still don't show up on time. Don't that unnerve you? Yes, yes. I'll be there in five minutes, 20 minutes late. Let me tell you something. Our problem is God never told us when he was going to show up. He just said, I'll be there. Yes. In six troubles, he's there, and in seven, he will deliver you. Now get this, he didn't say in the six trouble you wouldn't feel it. We're so wrapped up in our feelings, we can't see the move of God. Ooh, I'll say out to that one, Lord. We get so wrapped up and what we're going through and how I feel and what I think I see I can't see that God is doing something for me what is he doing first of all he got to get me rid of everybody in my life
realized that I was too connected to that I couldn't hear him. Then he's got to get me disconnected from me. Because I'm a spoiled, rotten brat. And if I don't get my way, I throw a little tension pack. Oh, y'all may not want to say it. I ain't coming to church if I don't get my way. I ain't paying tithes if I don't get my way. I, 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 I refuse to talk to the saints if I don't get my way. I refuse to go to bed praying if I don't get my way. I'm not going to wake up to pray if I don't get my way. And fasting, forget it. You throwing a tantrum tantrum and not going to stop the progress of God because he said I will be exalted among the heathen I will be glorified. You cannot stop the progress. Yes. I'm just laying the foundation this morning. Maybe in a couple of weeks I'll preach. Preach, <laughs> Now, it's sad when you've been promised God is going to do something. But you're mad he hasn't showed up yet. <laughs> Y'all can catch it. Lazarus name meant one whom God aids. You promised you would aid me. But I'm sick. And your point being what? You promised you would be there for me. Why do you think you ain't going crazy yet? You promised you would deliver me. It ain't time yet. What do you mean it ain't time? I see all the walls crashing in. Can you still breathe? Barely. You good. <laughs> see, we are, must understand our worst situation is God's perfect opportunity. He likes Situations that seem impossible. Because that way nobody else can get glory but him. You ever have somebody, how did you get out of that? You're like, oh, I, child, I don't know. But when you actually been through a storm and something so tight and you got out of it, you had to say, God did that one. I did that one. God did that one. See, it's sad when God got a rest of glory out of his own people. Wow. Every time before you said, I don't know, you know, I've been saving and I've been doing this and if they finally came together, gave God no glory. But after this one, you gonna say, God did this. Mm -hmm. I ain't got nothing to do with this. Right. God did this. It wasn't my prayer. It wasn't my time. God showed up and God delivered me and God rescued my mind. The victim. You know, Job was a victim. He didn't hear the conversation between Satan and God. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. Job, you're upright. You shun evil. But guess what? You got to go through testing time. Wait a minute, God. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, okay, I can deal with this amount of tests. You know how we are. We, we give God our parameters. Lord, you can test me in this area, but all this over here, we good. <laughs> you know, I, we, we don't even need to discuss this. Let's act like this part is not existed. You got this part to test me in, and I'm strong. I can fight the enemy in this. It's easy to fight when you don't like it. It's easy to fight when it don't bother you. But all this over there is what you got to really deal with. When God challenges your insecurity, when God challenges your abandonment issues, when God challenges your hatred of being used, when God challenges you, what will you do? <laughs> Woo! Good God of 
somebody. Now he's in Bethlehem. He's in a place where Jesus knew where he was. So it's not like Jesus had to figure out, take out map quests, and, and you know, ask somebody directions. He knew the house, he knew the layout. And when you get to the scriptures, you'll find out Jesus never really came all the way into town. <laughs> because they buried their problem on the outskirts. So why do I need to go all the way in town when your problem was really on the outskirts? Where you put your problem is, that's where he showed. Oh, good God. Too often, Lord, if you just come into the house, I'll be all right. But that ain't where you buried your problem. Here's why some folks, they mad when they come to church and the anointing falls in the church. I'm mad with the church. What you doing there? Because that's where your problem is. <laughs> why are you touching so-and-so? Because that's your problem. You won't admit your problem so God can't show up. Yeah. Yeah. The victim, notice he just laid there while everybody else has conversations around you. You can go through so much that you just shut up. <laughs> you shut up, shut down, I ain't got nothing to say. Everybody else around you is talking. Yep. Everybody else around you is saying, I thought they were faithful. What, why, why ain't God hearing them? Everybody around you is adding to your affliction because they're making you question who loves you. Wow. Maybe y'all have never been to a place where somebody made you question if God really cared about you because they're bringing up questions you really never thought about until they started questioning you. You've been praying how long? And nothing happened, right? <laughs> but so-and-so got what they wanted. And they ain't in the praying. Uh -uh. I ain't saying nothing. But just look how fishy to me, you know. <laughs> and you see that God said he was going to fix it. But it looked like it's getting worse. It's some strange fix in the middle. But I ain't one to gossip. <laughs> you said, God promised you this, that, and the other. But instead of getting this, that, and the other, you losing this, that, and the other, what you couldn't afford to lose in the first place. People around you, the crowd, the critics, will mess you up. You got to watch who you allow to talk to you. And can I say this? You got to watch who you allow to talk around you. Because, can I say this? People that talk around you, whether you want to admit it or not, what they're saying is entering your brain and will mess with you later. When people start talking negatively around you, you can fight it so much in your conscious mind, but it slips into that unconscious mind. And at night, it bothers you. Yes, it does. Yeah, Lord. Oh, my God. Lord, help me, help me. I'm just trying to lay this out, but this thing is working on my brain because I, I've never seen what I see now that just because he loves you, does not mean that you're not going to lose some things. Just because those around you, he loves them and hears them praying, doesn't mean things are going to stop all of a sudden. There's a greater purpose for you going through. God must be glorified. Yes. Now get this. We quote this scripture. No weapon formed against me Amen. shall prosper. But notice something that is not mentioned. 
he never said that the weapon wouldn't be formed. He never said that they wouldn't go lie on you. He just said it wouldn't work. He didn't say they didn't produce the weapon. He didn't say they didn't brandish the weapon and show you what they got. He just said it won't work. We upset and in arms. <sighs> so in other words, you can see them getting the ore out of the earth, the metal and the steel out of the earth and melting it down. You can see them forming the gun. You can see them forming the bullets, putting in the gun pot, and putting the bullet into the gun. They shined it up and they showing you what they can do to you. And you see it work on everybody else. Remember what the scripture said? You're going to see the arrow flying by day or the, uh, and the terror by night, but it shall not come nigh thee. We get upset by what we see, not realizing that just because it's formed and it worked on everybody else don't mean it's going to work on us. Oh, good God Almighty. Thank you for that quick remark. Too often we're scared of what we've seen it do to somebody else. And that's what we go to God with. They just did this to so-and-so. They lied on so-and-so and ruined their reputation. They split so-and-so. And everything he had, they split it. What you gonna do for me? He said, I want you to see what the enemy can do. But I want you to know I got you. And the enemy can't do it to you. Whew. No wonder the writer said, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. And oh, what a far taste of glory divine. I'm an heir yes, of salvation. Yes, Purchased by God. Yes. Woo. Yes, Lord, have mercy. Now get this. I want us to understand and why we go off on this Thanksgiving week. I want us to understand just because you're in victim status don't mean you stay there. Because the victim has to win the victory. The victim is the one that gains victory. You can never gain victory if you've not been the victim. You really don't have a testimony if you've never been tested. Don't tell me God can bring you out if you've never been in nothing. This is why it tickles me when people over-dramatize their victim status. Because guess what? We all have been victims. And it was all traumatic to us. But have you realized the devil will make you downplay somebody else's victim? You ain't going through nothing. Let me tell you what I've been through. And somebody read the straight day time look at you and say, you ain't going through nothing. Let me tell you what I've been through. The prize is not how big of a victim you are. The prize is how much victory you got from being a victim. I'm on business. We all got victim status. But everybody's not going to fight to gain victory status. Oh my God. Oh, I wish I knew how to preach. Oh my God, because about this time I'd be holding my ear. Lord, have mercy. Now get this if you please. Here is Mary that thinks, well, I anointed you. I've serviced you. So surely you got to hear my request first. Isn't that what we tell God? Mm -hmm. I paid my time. If time church door is open, I'm there. Surely you got to hear me. But you still got to go through. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But Lord, you, Martha said, you, you, you cast the spirits out of me so I know you love me. And you don't want those spirits to return. And he's saying, 
you don't want those spirits to return. You can't threaten God and expect a result. Because God says, I'm always creator. And if you don't serve me, and if I needed you and your physicality, I'm creator God and I can make somebody look just like you and keep the ball rolling. The one thing that is helping me while I'm going through and been going through is the fact God does not need me. And the fact that if he doesn't need me, I can't threaten God to say, I'm leaving then. He said, fine. Then you will be out of your inheritance and I'll raise up your next door neighbor and they'll do what I want them to do. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. Isn't that what he did to Israel? Yes. He said, y'all don't have to serve me. That's fine. I'll raise up a people that's not a people and call out a people for my name's sake. Let me tell you something. You can't make God jealous enough to fulfill your request. You got to humble yourself and say, God, excuse me. I'm sorry for threatening you, God. I'm sorry for being entitled. I'm sorry for acting like a spoiled brat. I need help. From you. Yes. Told y'all I was just laying the foundation today. I ain't going to preach on this today. Y'all ain't going to kill me. Now get this. Too often, when we're going through, we can't appreciate what God has already done. Because all we see is the now problem. But the only reason you can see the now problem is because you had a yesterday victory. Are y'all to catch that? Because remember, you should have been gone. But it gave you victory yesterday. So now you're facing the now problem because of what it did yesterday. So instead of complaining, should you have a praise for what he did yesterday? And since he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, yesterday he gave me victory. He's going to give me victory over this today. Lazarus, God is aiding you. But the only reason he's aiding you is because you're doing something. God is not aiding you to sit back and do nothing and act like God is unfair. You will lose your inheritance for not sanctifying God among the people. I don't know who that was for. God bless your soul. But that's why he got mad at Moses. He said, you didn't sanctify me before the people. Now, I don't care what they do. And we're going to deal with that crowd because that crowd is messed up. Because, can I tell you something? Everybody around you is not looking for your good. Amen. Some folks are only showing up to see what you get. If you get an inheritance, they're your buddy. If they don't give you nothing, they're going to talk about you. Same crowd, different response depending on what you get. And here's the problem. We will embrace them or reject them based on their actions. Never looking at, why am I embracing a gold digger? Got quiet. They only embrace you because you got something and they want what you got. And so you embrace them. If they reject you, you say, fine, I don't need you no how. But what about the one that stayed when you had nothing? God says, that's the one usable. That, that, that's the one you want to keep. Remember when Gideon went to the, the fight, uh, the Midianites, and he had about th over 3,000 men, and God said, you got too many folks with you. For me, to give you the victory. Now you might get it temporarily. 
But if you want me to give you the victory, you got too many folks you depended on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you for that quick revelation, Lord. When you got too many people you can turn to, God said, I can't be involved in this because then you're going to give my glory to somebody else. So he said, let me test. I want you to test them out. Test them out. Tell everybody that's scared to go home. <laughs> I don't want to fight because, you know, an arrow might hit me. You ever have somebody rev you up for a fight? And then when it comes down to the fight, there ain't nowhere around. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can do this. Then it's time to actually do it. Where you at? Huh? Well, I didn't mean we as in a sense of me and you. I meant we as me mentally and you physically do. <laughs> so all the scary cats went home. He said, take them down to the river because you still got too many folks with you. Can I tell you something? Before God gives you the victory, he takes you through a pruning process to get all uh, rid of all the wannabes users. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. Too many of us are happy with the crowd and God has to do a weed out first. Pastor, you saying so-and-so's user? I didn't say that. You thought that. <laughs> What I'm saying is, sometimes people are not usable for the task God has for right then and there. Mm -hmm. Don't mean that there's something wrong with them, just mean they're not for that particular job. You don't use a screwdriver and a hammer and a nail. Too many of us are trying to use things and people that are not meant for the job that God got for us right now. And wonder why it's difficult and it doesn't work and it doesn't fit. Go down to the river. All that don't lap water or lap water like a dog, you send them home. Everybody that got their face down and ain't looking, you send them home because they, they can't do nothing no how because they ain't expecting the enemy. Can I tell you something? If you don't ex if, if, expect you're not getting anything. A person that does not expect is a complainer. A person that does not inspect or ex expect is a person that will never get anything because they're not looking for anything. So you got a person that's always praying but they're never expecting God to do anything so they sit right next to the hundred dollars on the floor but since they wasn't expecting it, they didn't look for it. And now they're blaming God. You didn't deliver me. I said it right there. If you had been watching as well as praying, it would have been. Gets them down to 300 men. He said, all right, I can give you a victory now. Uh, do you not know I'm going before an army? Somebody that got more men than these 300 that's been trained to fight. I know, but I'm going to give you the victory. I, I didn't ask you about your fighting ability at all. I just asked you, was you willing to fight? I didn't ask you about your education. I didn't ask you how much money you had in the bank account. I was wondering if you were willing to step out so I could show you who I was. Now you take those 300 men and you encamp the enemy. So you know they had to be far and in between to circle a whole regiment camp. They were more than six feet apart. <laughs> and I want you to take a picture and a camp. This is interesting fighting tools? Are we going to burn them out? I didn't say that. You know, we try to ask God and try to get God to explain why he gave us certain tools. Yeah. 
uh, this doesn't look like this is going to work. How am I going to fight an army with a pitcher that I pour water out of and a candle? Um, they got swords, they got spears, they got, you know, uh, those catapults and all that kind of, uh, how's this going? They got bow and arrows, uh, and we got a pitcher and a candle. Shut up. Y'all in place? I want you to just say these words. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon and drop the pitcher and the lamp. Why? Shut up and just do it. Sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The enemy wakes up and they get confused and start killing themselves. And all you're doing is sitting on the sideline looking. Nobody's raised the sword yet. They shoot each other. When it got down to a workable number, God said, all right, now you can pursue them. <laughs> I've given you the victory. But too many of us are too much in a hurry to sit there and watch what God is doing. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you for the first part of this message. God, we're in victim status right now. Things are happening on the left and on the right. But God, we know what you promised. And you cannot lie. God, we pray today that you would heal, that you would deliver, that you would set free that mind that is in bondage right now. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you would block every demonic spirit. My God, every hellish force by the power of God. Have your way, sir, we pray. My God, even those that are not here this morning, but that will hear this message, God, hear that cry. Let them know they're only in victim status for a little while, but they're coming up to victory status. Lord, deliver, I pray. And God, we give your name glory. We give you the honor. We worship and adore you. Both now and forever, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you have not gone down in the precious name of the Lord Jesus, for the remission of your sins, I can't remit your sins. I can't remove your sins. I can't cover your sins. But the name of Jesus will. And if you go down in that precious name of the Lord Jesus, he said he would wipe away all your sins, give you a brand new slate. So it's just like you had never committed. And then he said he would fill you with the Holy Ghost. Now, that sounds like a sweetheart deal to me. All you have to do is submit. He do the rest. When you like to get paid, all you have to do is show up to the building. You don't have to work. You can sit in the break room and say, thank you for my paycheck this week. And somebody would be fool enough to complain about that. But God said, all I want you to do is submit. I'll do the rest. Because you can't do it anyway. Remember, he translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. In other words, he took and put. He didn't even trust us to walk. He said, because I know you'll stumble. Let me just take you up and put you over there. If you know somebody that is ready to be baptized, give us a call. Our time is God's time. And if God convicts you, who am I to tell you to wait till the first Sunday, the fifth Sunday? If God convicts you, I'm, I'm, I'm with God. He said, I convicted them. They're ready. I'm ready too, Lord. Whatever you want. We got water. We got clothing for the change of your apparel. And somebody with clean hands take you down in the person name of Lord Jesus. For the remission of the removal of your sin. And a great big God. To fill you with the Holy Ghost. 
And when it's all over, we got a great big home on high. Hallelujah. Already paid for. No mortgage due. No electric rent due. No heat bill due. It's all paid for. No taxes on it. You can just walk in and, and give him glory on streets paved with gold. Hallelujah to Jesus. God bless your soul now. Uh, if you know somebody need prayer this week, tell them to call in. Tell them to uh, send us a Facebook message. Tell them to reach out. Don't, don't let the devil work you over all week. And, and you sit there and then wind up doing something stupid. And the devil sitting on the sideline. You know they was almost at victory and they didn't see it. Don't, don't, don't. As they, what the hell's up? Don't be stupid. Some of y'all don't know that because that's an old country song. You know I love you. Don't be stupid. Some of y'all, don't be stupid. Amen. God bless your souls in the name of Jesus. It is privilege time in the tavern.